Hi there, and let's get to it. In DaVinci Resolve, it's possible to composite between video tracks on a single timeline. The trick is to have transparency in the top layer that will allow us to see down through to the bottom layer. So in this example, my intention could be to reveal the screen on this monitor to see the footage on the bottom layer. So I'm going to go into the color page, and on the top video track, I'm going to open up my window and use a power curve to isolate the screen. I can then go into my power window and invert the selection. Now even though we can see that the screen's been replaced in the node, in reality, nothing's really happened. I'll have to enable the output of the alpha channel by right-clicking inside of the node editor and saying add alpha output. This will generate a blue node output into which we can feed the key information. And now I've revealed the astronaut video underneath. And that's a pretty basic demonstration of how you can composite two clips together, but I can improve the quality of this composite by, for example, generating an outside node, Alt-O, and I could also generate a key mixer into which I can feed both the extracted screen and the subtracted screen and feed it out as a single signal. And my intention for the outside node is to blend in the reflections on the screen so that we get a better composite. But what this tool is most commonly used for is for compositing chroma key material, that is to say, green screen. So you usually begin with a backplate into which you'll be inserting your green screen characters and the green screen materials themselves. Let's put this composite together. First, I'm going to drop off a marker to indicate when our reaction occurs. So at around about this point, he notices something at the bottom. And I'm going to click M on my keyboard to drop this marker. Then I'm going to hide this top layer and do the same thing with my backplate. And there it is, the water hits the cup at about this point. And I'm going to click M. Now I just have to make sure that my snap tool is enabled. And now I can drag my bottom layer. And you can see it just snaps into place once the two markers are lined up, which is a great function. I'm then going to trim the top clip, which is longer. I can now go into the color page where we can start putting this together. So the first thing I might want to do is increase the saturation inside of the green channel. So I'm going to go into my HSL curves and target the saturation using the hue. In this case, that's green. So I'm going to click near the actor, which will drop off my three points. And then I can click and drag upwards to increase the green in the shot. It's okay if the actor himself or the spill on him is also being affected because we'll be addressing the green spill separately. I will then Alt S to create a serial node and this one will be dedicated to the actual extraction. So I'm gonna call it chroma key and then go into my qualifier and I'll start off with the 3D because that's the one specifically designed for chroma workflows. And I'm going to click close to our subject to select a range of the greens. I can then check my selection by turning on the highlight tool and you can see that that is a pretty clean outline. And from this point, what I think would make sense would be to go after the matte finesse and just clean up the selection as it is. So I'm not gonna go too aggressive. I'm gonna leave it as it is, turn off my highlight tool and I'm going to make sure that my final output over here is inverted because right now it's showing us the background. So then the last thing we want to do still on the chroma key node is to grab a window and just make a power curve around our talent. Make sure you leave enough room for your talent to move around I'm going to turn off my highlight, right click, and add an alpha output. I'm going to feed the key information into the alpha output, and almost immediately I see my character dropped into the backplate. I can then go into my sizing palette and start controlling this entire clip. So using input sizing, I can then pan him across into the cup. And the fact that he's so clearly on top of the cup is a demonstration of something else we have to do, which is the actual compositing process. Since compositing is a much larger topic than can be covered in a five minute video, I thought I'd record a separate video dedicated to green screen workflows in which I'll painstakingly go through all the compositing steps that need to be taken to finish this shot. Thank you very much for watching and until next time.